here is a scientific article. If I say, look for the term visualization, there is quite a discussion of visualization over here. And if I want to bring that forward so that I can look at it, I can just stretch it forward. And so even though I'm looking at one particular part here, I can still see other regions where there's likely information. In these kind of interfaces, uh, there's very few error messages, for example. You, you may not have done the right thing, but you know what it is that you've done by what happens, as opposed to giving you an error message, which you then have to interpret. Here we have a piece of hierarchical information. We can scroll around in the space, so we see the details, but we don't see the context. Now, we could make everything fit on the display by reducing it so it does fit. You see the whole context here, but you don't see any detail. So what we do instead is we wrap these things around to make a three-dimensional tree called the cone tree. And the node that we're interested in is in the front. But if we touch on any other part of the tree, that part comes to the front and the other parts come to the back. We can also do this in a three-dimensional version, which is more aesthetic. Even though designers use techniques like visualization and direct manipulation to empower users, how can they be sure they've made an interface that people can actually use? The most brilliant software designer in the world cannot predict how users are actually going to stumble over their programs. The best designer in the world is actually the user. And if you listen to them really hard, they tell you all of the answers. Of the display. Here's a system which we're working on that uses some of these principles. This is for forging the World Wide Web. One of the problems of the web is that you can only see one page at a time. So I can store these in a three-dimensional workspace. I use gestures because gestures are the very fastest way to move items around in the space. But now I can put these things into book form called web books. I can rifle through them. I can take pages out and put it onto the desk. I can put pages into the book. Also, we use camera movements in this kind of interface. If I want to examine them, then I touch the shelf, and then I pick a book off the shelf. And in this case, I found a web page from Ben Schneiderman's group, and now I'm going to put that into the book. And anyway, the production problem is solved. I paste it in the solution. Although it's impossible to predict what new interfaces will look like, we can be fairly sure that to be successful, they must exploit the natural capabilities of their users. Good. Finding appropriate metaphors, allowing people to directly manipulate their work, and visualization of information will be increasingly important. The best new designs will be built on these principles by designers who listen and respond to the users. This is wonderful, Adrian.